Today you're gonna learn why you might love North Carolina. While most of the best wine growing regions in the United States are in California, North Carolina has a region with a temperate climate and latitudes similar to Napa Valley. The Yadkin Valley is a region in central North Carolina with elevations ranging from 800 to 1200 feet. The loamy soil and rolling topography make it ideal for growing European wine grapes and French American hybrid grapes. In other parts of the South, muscadine grapes are the predominant type of grape and they're hardy and resilient in our hot, humid climate. But wine drinkers are, let's say, a little suspicious of muscadine wine. Here are a few comments that I found on Reddit. Is there a muscadine wine that's not terrible? What's a muscadine? If it's not 100% vinifera, chances are it ranges from wine adjacent to rich inducing. But in the Yadkin Valley, up to 70% of grapes grown are the European variety. Throughout the region, there are wineries, bed and breakfasts, amazing restaurants. If you wanted to visit the Yadkin Valley, you could combine your winery tour with some agritourism at some place like the Purple Alpaca for a farm tour. It's really a beautiful region with rolling countryside that makes for a great day trip or even just a scenic drive. The North Carolina mountains have a unique and fascinating culture. A great place to experience the depth of this culture is at the annual Hometown Heritage Festival in Franklin, North Carolina. The festival showcases the unique lifestyles and crafts that are still a thriving part of North Carolina. You'll see things like quilting, wood carving, canoe building, a live working gem mining flume. There's also Appalachian music with hammered dulcimer and plenty of banjo, guitar, and flute. North Carolina's coast is full of amazing towns with distinctive and unique cultures. There is one place known as the sailing capital of the world called Oriental North Carolina. I visited there recently and spoke with a few of the locals who told me that it isn't just renowned in North Carolina, sailors from around the world are familiar with Oriental's protected waters that offer smooth and clear sailing protected from the choppy water of the open seas. Yeah, for the winter, uh, folks generally pass through here. Uh, it's a good stop to reprovision, do some repairs, and then they move on. They'll either go out the inlet and go down the east coast of the United States or continue down the intercoastal waterway, you know, down south. So we're, we're a good waypoint on your journey north and south if you're a cruiser. But if you have a full-time boat, you know, it's a great place to keep your boat because we are protected inside the Outer Banks. So we're not out there in the ocean. And, uh... and North Carolina locals throughout the state have strong ties with this town. Many North Carolinians grew up learning to sail in the YMCA's Camp Seagull and Camp Seafarer. In the spring, from the mountains to the coast, pink, purple, and yellow blooms burst out all over the state. When I first moved here from Florida, which didn't really have seasons, I was stunned by the beauty of the different flowering trees, bushes, bulbs, and wildflowers. Azaleas and rhododendrons can be seen throughout the state in planned gardens and growing in the wild. Pink dogwoods are a favorite of mine. Spring is a great time to visit some of the amazing botanical gardens in North Carolina. There's quite a few great ones and many of them are free and open to the public, but you have not lived until you've seen the gardens at the Biltmore. It's truly breathtaking with over 8,000 acres of formal and informal gardens and conservatories. It's pricey at $54 a ticket, but you have to go at least once and children under 16 are usually free in the summertime. We're no LA or Chicago or New York and we can't compete with variety that is available in those cities from entertainment to food, but when you come to one of our cities, you will be welcomed. People will talk to you and you can stop anyone at any time and they're not gonna to be too busy to answer your questions. Festivals are a big thing in North Carolina. Most days there's one going on somewhere in North Carolina. The Travel Channel voted the Carolina Renaissance Festival one of the best in the United States. So if dressing up in medieval clothing and watching a jousting match and other Middle Ages entertainment while eating turkey legs is your thing, this is a great tradition. It happens every year just outside of Charlotte, but there are also these amazing little cultural events that are steeped in North Carolina tradition. The North Carolina Herring Festival takes place every April in Jamesville. The Herring Festival is the celebration of the spring runs of herring on the Roanoke River that were the bedrock of this eastern North Carolina community's economy. There's a parade, lots of rides, booths set up of course with plenty of fried herring and other fish, live music, and a firework show to top off the evening. And maybe you didn't know this, but there was a large population of immigrants to North Carolina from the Scottish Highlands. And for the last 57 years, the Grandfather Mountain Scottish Highlands Games has celebrated the Scottish culture and heritage in Western North 
North Carolina. The Grandfather Mountain Games are considered the best in the U.S. because the spectacular mountain setting is so reminiscent of Scotland. Low corporate taxes and cost of living make North Carolina highly attractive for corporate headquarters. There are 14 Fortune 500 and 26 Fortune 1000 companies based in North Carolina. Some of the key industries include aerospace, heavy machinery like Caterpillar and Daimler trucks, biotechnology and pharmaceuticals are well established in the largest research park in the U.S. in Durham, North Carolina, along with three Tier 1 research universities. North Carolina is the third largest financial center with companies like AT&T, Wells Fargo, and Bank of America. North Carolina has the second fastest growing IT industry in the United States. North Carolina is also the furniture capital of the world. The largest furniture store, furniture manufacturer, and furnishings industry trade show are all in North Carolina. Tourism is a key industry with North Carolina being the 10th most visited state in the United States. North Carolina is home to 41 state parks, and I'm gonna post a link to a Google map with all the state parks loaded on it. So if you're visiting, you can easily find out which ones are closest to you. Gorgeous State Park is home to some of the most amazing waterfalls in North Carolina. It's also a great spot for fly fishing in the designated wild trout streams. I'm a history buff, so I love Fort Macon State Park. It's one of the finest examples of 19th century military architecture. And during the summer, they have reenactments and demonstrations. When you get there, you'll see signs that tell you that it wasn't designed for safety, and that is a true story. Be very careful with small children. They could literally run off what feels like the edge of a grassy field, but it's actually the roof of the fort. Jockey's Ridge State Park is about three miles from where the Wright brothers made their first flight. Jockey's Ridge Park has the tallest living sand dune on the East Coast, and I don't know if your imagination is running a little wild with this information, but if you've ever wanted to fly, not like in a commercial airplane, but fly like a bird, you should visit this park. You can take hang gliding lessons and rent gear if you've never done it before. Kite flying, sailboarding, and windsurfing are all popular activities at Jockey's Ridge. North Carolina was built on agriculture, and even today, North Carolina is still considered an agricultural state, and farming is a big part of our economy. Our biggest crops grown in NC are sweet potatoes, soybeans, corn, peanuts, cotton, apples, and Christmas trees. We have amazing farmer's markets and CSAs and farm-to-table restaurants, but the cool thing about being an agricultural state is some of the innovations that farmers are making to adapt to the modern economy. New farmers are getting into the business and many are incorporating agritourism into their business model. What this means to North Carolinians is that getting fresh local food and engaging with our farmers can be a part of your life if you want it to be. When my kids were little, one of the things that we did every year was to visit Celebrity Dairy in Siler City. Celebrity Dairy is an award-winning goat dairy and bed and breakfast and every spring when the goat kids are born they open their barns to the public for one weekend so the goats can get acclimated to people so you can totally cuddle a baby goat and feed it a bottle one other cool thing you can download the visit nc farms app in the comments i posted a link there and you can find a farm to visit they'll tell you if they're accepting visitors if they do weddings if you can purchase goods on site pretty much anything that you need to know when you're out driving around in the countryside and you want to make a stop north carolina has the largest number of craft breweries in the South. NC beers are becoming known internationally for their quality as they are exported all over the world. There are more than 340 breweries throughout the state of North Carolina. Brewery tours are becoming popular, kind of like winery tours. You want to visit some places and sample their brews, but you don't want to have to worry about getting yourself home. You can take a brewery tour. I'm going to post a link in the comments to a map of every craft brewery in North Carolina and a link to a list of brewery tours available in North Carolina. If you like this video, you might also like this one about some of the reasons you might not want to move to North Carolina.